You've recently committed to take a cat home and you want to make it right. Regardless of the age of the cat that you're trying to take home, we all know that moving in can be overwhelming. We are most certainly not the only ones that can get stressed when moving into a new apartment. I'm moving in myself and when I was trying to make my home comfortable for me, I thought, wait a second, why don't you make a video and you try to share your experience with other people that are going through the same or that are bringing a new kitty home. Hey! Hey! Do you approve? Let's try to make moving in a better experience for everyone. And there is not a one-size-fits-all strategy when taking a new cat home. Every cat is different as well as the circumstances, but there are a few things that we can do to have an overall successful introduction. In this video, I want to share with you what are these key things to make a proper introduction of a new kitty or a new cat to our home. To do so, I'm going to separate this video into pieces. In the first part of the video, I want to talk about what to do when you go to the shelter or the breeder to pick up your cat. And in the second one, we're going to see what are the key things that you need to do the first day when the cat is arriving home. I'm going to add timestamps in the description box down below so if you already have a cat, if you're not going to the shelter of the breeder, you can skip this first half and you can go to the second half what to do the first day when you are arriving home. At the end of the video I also want to share with you which are some of the most common mistakes when taking a new family member home. I'm going to keep this video short and sweet so you can get value from start to finish. Let's do this! Let's work! Let's start from the beginning. You arrive at the shelter and you have already fallen in love with your kitty or your cat. Well, most likely the kitty or the cat has already fallen in love with you. All the paperwork is done and you and your cat are ready to go home. There are three things you need to ask the shelter or the breeder before that happens. Food, litter and something that has your cat smell. Understanding what food your cat has been eating is key as some cats can be very picky with the food they eat for a reason. They might become ill or even stop eating if we change the food abruptly. This is because cats have sensitive stomachs. Cat bacteria are crucial for digesting and obtaining the nutrients from the food that your cat is eating. But not all bacteria can digest all food. When a new food is introduced, it alters the intestinal environment. This means that if you make a very abrupt change of food, there's not going to be enough bacteria to digest the new food and the old bacteria that was used to digesting the old food is going to die because they have nothing to eat. This is a complex topic that I am not no expert about, but long story short, changing food abruptly can create intestinal imbalances, causing symptoms such as vomiting, diarrhea, amongst others. A good idea is to ask the shelter or the breeder what food has our cat been eating so that we can make sure that we have some of that at home for when we first arrive. There are, at least, Two other things you should ask your breeder or the shelter when you go pick up your new family member. But before we get to that, I would love to know how many of you are buying a cat versus how many of you are adopting a cat. Can you please write it down in the comment section below? I would love to know the proportion of my audience that is buying a cat versus how many people are adopting a cat. Back at it. Two things that you really need to ask for when you go pick up your cat. Some cats might have problems identifying where to go when nature calls them. Having the same litter already at home, it's going to make your life and their life a lot easier because they're going to recognize the smell and immediately know that that's their litter box. Another thing, and I believe that this one is the most important one it's something that has your cats to smell at the breeder or the shelter the cats usually play with toys and have their own blanket or a small towel it would be very nice if you can get that same towel or some of the toys that they were playing with and you can take them with you to your home. Cats find their own scent reassuring. So having a piece of garment or a toy impregnated with your cat's pheromones can come extremely handy, both inside the carrier as well as to create a more familiar environment when you first arrive home. During the trip home, you're going to see that your cat might be meowing and stressed out. Some cats will appreciate touch, but if you see that it's not soothing them, it's better to leave them alone. What? What do you have there? At home, you should have a room ready to welcome your newcomer, a safe place. If you can choose, it is better to pick a space that is medium to small. Bigger spaces can be overwhelming and we want our cat to explore the house little by little as they spread their smell and link to the smell as well. If the room that you're choosing doesn't have any soft surfaces like carpet, sofas, curtains, towels, it's better to provide some for them so that they can use these pheromones that we were talking before to spread their smell and create that safe space that's reassuring for them. 
The room should have at least a litter box, a water bowl, some food, their carrier, and a piece of garment, if possible, already impregnated with their pheromones. We have a room, and the room has everything our cat needs. It's time to open the carrier. We're going to let the cat exit the carrier on their own. Some cats might jump off the carrier right away, and some are going to take their time and get a hold of the situation from the safety of the carrier. Once the carrier is open and the newcomer is exploring the place, we can stay around and see how the interaction is going, but try not to interfere. Let them peacefully explore the room, and if they are in the mood for playing, you can gently play with them. But if the cat is too agitated, I would recommend you to close the door and let the cat be on their own for a little while. You can check in on them every 15 to 30 minutes and see if stress is transitioning towards curiosity. When curiosity peaks, you can open the door and let your cat explore the rest of the house. If your home is very big or it has different floors, try to keep spaces separated and let them explore only one floor at a time to prevent them from getting lost or feeling overwhelmed. Some cats are more prone to hiding than others. If that's the case of your newcomer, you will see that they might spend a lot of time under the sofa, inside the carrier that you provided, or any other hidden spot that they find reassuring inside the house. It's okay and it's completely normal. In those cases, when you open your house for your cat to explore, try to provide spots where your cat can hide but still be around you and hear your voice and get used to your smell. I have provided myself a safe space for Mia so she can hang out around me when I'm working but still having a high spot, which is what she likes the most. There are a few mistakes you want to avoid when introducing your cat home. And the first one, don't force your cat to be with you. Quite the opposite. The last thing that you want is to create a negative association between you and your cat because when they are stressed, you're forcing them to be with you. So it is very important that you give your cat some space both when going home on the car as well as when arriving home, particularly if they are asking for time alone. Another typical mistake it's to not be ready. What I mean by that, you don't want to arrive home to realize that you still haven't bought the litter, that you don't have food for your cat, or that you don't have any scratch or any soft surface to provide your cat so that they can suit themselves. And please don't do this. Don't go to the pet store after going to pick up your cat. Your cat is already very stressed. We don't need to add extra pressure on them. So anticipate, go to the store, and get everything that you need beforehand. Review if any of the plants that you have at home might be toxic for cats. Some plants might even be lethal and we want to remove them to avoid any possible risks. There's a very cool website that allows you to check if the plants that you have at home are toxic or lethal for your cat. I don't remember the name, so I'm going to add it in the description box down below. I'm working on a video with tips and tricks to take your home to the next level and make it perfect for your new companion. If you are interested in watching that video as well, make sure to subscribe and click the bell button so you are notified when the next video is up. On the meantime, while the video is not up, there are a few things you must have at home. And there's no need to take pen and paper because all the products that I'm going to mention now are in the description box down below. I'm going to add links to all the products that I'm going to be talking about so if you don't know where to start or you don't have time to do the research, at least you know that there's a happy cat dad that is comfortable with those products. And if you happen to use those links with zero additional cost to you, I get a small percentage that allows me to keep doing what I'm doing. Scratchers. Crucial if you want to keep your sofa safe. Toys. And there are two kinds of toys that you should get. Interactive toys, the ones that you play with your cat, and toys that your cat can play on their own. A hiding place. You don't need to necessarily buy anything because you're going to have a carrier and many cats love hiding inside the carrier. But probably your cat is going to be more comfortable if you provide something that's designed for the rest. And finally, litter and food. At some point, you're going to have to transition from the breeder's food and litter to the one that you like the most. I love Hill Science for food, and I love World Best Cat Litter um, for the litter. Again, the links are in the description. If you want to take your bond to the next level, I highly encourage you to try clicker training. So check out this video, and see you next time. Bye.